Listen to this, a treasure hunter on the run for two years is now in handcuffs. Tommy Thompson, he gained notoriety in 1988 when he found the sunken ship SS Central America, nicknamed the Ship of Gold. The ship went down in 1857, taking with it nearly 500 passengers and thousands of pounds of gold. Now, Thompson has been fighting legal battles over that gold ever since. We're joined now by 48 Hours Crime Sider reporter Michelle Sagona. So, Michelle, what are you hearing about Mr. Thompson? Well, here's what I can tell you, is that in 2012, Mr. Thompson was supposed to show up for a court hearing, and he did not show up. So because of that, the judge issued a contempt of court warrant, uh, which went out, and not just for him, but also for uh, someone who's been described as his significant other. Also, she has also been described as, as his assistant. And so at that point, that warrant goes to the U.S. Marshal Service, and the U.S. Marshal Service really took you know, really took this case and moved it forward as much as possible. They tracked down hundreds of leads. They put up billboards all across Ohio and Florida trying to find Tommy Thompson. Uh, and finally, they were successful at that just this week. What do they think um, the motivation might have been? I mean, you know, did he get too carried away being a, a pirate? Well, what do they think was the story behind this? You know, it's hard to tell, but what I can tell you is, is that a lot of people wanted a piece of this pie. And he had a lot, he was fighting off a lot of legal battles, uh, not just with the technicians that helped him to find this particular pot of gold, this uh, shipwreck of gold, but also, um, you know, through investors who invested in him back in the 80s to be able to go out there and find it, and insurance companies uh, that claimed that they actually insured a lot of this gold and, you know, a lot of the prized possessions that were on this ship back in the 1800s. So he was really kind of being, you know, attacked and coming at from a lot of different angles. Um, and so what, you know, what we know is that he was renting a mansion in the Florida area back in 2008. And as I mentioned, in 2012, um, you know, he went on the run from that point on and was just captured. But in, what I can, what I can also tell you is that, for, according to reports, is that uh, when investigators went into that mansion, and this, these are according to uh, gatekeepers and caretakers of that particular property, they found, you know, a book in there about how to remain invisible, how to live life on the run with only cash and, you know, disposable phones and things of that nature. So, so Michelle, what's next in this case? What's going to happen is, is that both of them will be extradited back to Ohio to be able, you know, to face what what has been you know what has what they've been trying to capture them for over the last couple of years so that's the first thing that will happen and i'm sure a lot of other legal proceedings after that involving many of these other people that are going after him all right 48 hours crime Sider reporter michelle sagona thanks as always now if you want to follow updates on this investigation and for more intriguing crime stories check out cbsnews.com crimesider